okay you learned machine learning watching my videos or someone else's videos on youtube or you took some online courses and have a certificate to prove that you have machine learning skills or you took some university courses either way you have machine learning skills and now you're looking for your first job now here are a few things like five plus two that i'm going to talk about a few things that in my point of view are essential for you to check whether you have these skills so you can increase your chances of hireability. Let's go ahead and look at these. And some of you, you may find them to be common sense. Hey, why are you talking about this? I know I need this skill, but it's worth talking about this, starting with the first one. And again, no brainer, NumPy arrays, because machine learning means working with data, often the data in the format of a NumPy array. So it's essential for you to be highly proficient with all aspects of NumPy arrays. Simple things such as uh, uh, expanding the number of dimensions, right? Reshaping your input, uh, reshaping your array dimensions, and uh, also working with multidimensional arrays. And what does it mean by slicing this array and so on? So being proficient in NumPy is essential and keep practicing. No matter how much you know, you think you know that about NumPy, you'll be constantly surprised. There is so much out there. So please constantly keep uh, learning about NumPy. So let's move on to the second skill uh, uh, in my point of view. Again, uh, pandas, or I should probably call it uh, working with structured data. Pandas is the most common library that is uh, easy, that makes it easy for us to work with uh, structured data. Again, whether you are working in financial type of data sets or time series type of data sets, or even with uh, uh, images and video formats, at some point you'll be working with structured data and Pandas is uh, your go-to library in most cases. If your data sets are humongous, then you can go into Dask. Uh, but again, it I would I would lump it with uh, I would lump it with pandas. So again, every aspect of pandas, please go ahead and spend time in uh, uh, how to properly format yeah, uh, using pandas, how to load CSV and Excel files using uh, using pandas, how to web scrape and get the data into a pandas format. So eventually, you should be able to work with structured data, and for that, pandas and Dask are the right libraries. And for the third skill or the thing that you need to know is uh, I put this as uh, digital images and videos. Well, if you are into time series and financial analysis, you may not be working with uh, uh, you know images and videos, but in many, many, many fields, like whether it is autonomous driving or whether it is uh, microscopy, remote sensing, uh, or medical image processing, uh, working with images is becoming more and more common uh, when it comes to deep learning. So you have to understand exactly what a digital image means. What does a pixel value of uh, 128 actually mean in an 8-bit image? What does a pixel value of 128 mean in a 16-bit image? What is an 8-bit? What is 16-bit? What is multi-channel imaging? Because in satellites and others, you know, imaging, uh, you may have uh, multi-spectral or multi-channel uh, data that you need to be working with. Again, you need to be proficient in uh, with NumPy to be able to understand and uh, handle these images in a proper way. Also, you need to understand how uh, you can handle different uh, image formats uh, for, uh, again, also video formats, right? Images can come in some proprietary formats. They can come in some semi-standard formats like DICOM. Eventually, you need to know how to handle those, convert them into NumPy arrays, and then work with work your magic with your machine learning. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is not really a technical skill, uh, but a domain knowledge. Again, this is a no-brainer, right? I mean, you must have domain knowledge of whatever domain that you're working with. You cannot just go into a pharmaceutical, you cannot apply for a pharmaceutical uh, job analyzing all this drug discovery uh, data or image data if you don't know how the drug discovery process actually works. So educate yourself on this process. If you have to take classes, if you have to go uh, to your local, you know, some pharmaceutical company, because people are willing to talk about uh, how things happen. Find someone like a mentor who can tell you exactly how things happen you know in that industry they'll not give you some um, you know any industry secret information but they can uh, definitely help you understand the process maybe go to your local university and talk to respective professors who can shed some light into these processes if you really want to work in a specific field you need to gain that domain knowledge one way or the other okay moving on the next one 
create an online footprint. Many people ignore this. Believe me, if you are a serious candidate for someone at a uh, for a position, they will Google search your name and not finding anything about you is not a good thing. It's definitely not a good thing. You need to leave some good online footprint. I'm not talking about Facebook and Twitter. I'm actually talking about uh, finding some of your publications online. Well, if you haven't published anything, that's fine because it's not very common for undergrads, for example, you know, to publish uh, papers. But at least I should be able to find your GitHub page with uh, code from your projects. But leave some good online content so the interviewer feels like he or she already knows you before you walk into the room or even to get an interview chance these are uh, some of the essential things that you need to make sure you know uh, happen you know or uh, make sure that the interviewer finds online okay so these are the top five and let me give you a couple of bonus uh, skills because i think these are also kind of uh, uh, useful necessary almost essential but maybe you can get away one is math and statistics well i almost said you don't need math and statistics right i mean you do need math and statistics skills basic skills because you're devising experiments and you are expected to interpret the results of your machine learning you cannot do that without a good knowledge in math and statistics like uh, when i say math and statistics it can be as simple as what is dice coefficient what is intersection over union and how do you interpret uh, you know how do you devise a uh, an experiment for example uh, using i don't know student t test how do you conduct that uh, and uh, if you really want to work at certain uh, certain uh, companies for example nvidia or places where your uh, focus is going to be uh, less on application but more on algorithm development of course you need to know linear algebra and calculus you need to understand the back propagation you need to understand uh, partial differentiation and all that stuff for sure and uh, the last one I should say the five plus two right the bonus one is communication and soft skills you should be able to effectively communicate whatever you are doing uh, or whatever the results are but you should be able to effectively communicate well uh, nowadays we live in again a globalized world so uh, where english is adopted to be the official in most countries so if you are good at uh, communicating in english that's even better but uh, being able to effectively communicate in whatever local language that you're working uh, on i mean that is uh, 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 that is a must now most of us actually come from non-English speaking places. Uh, of course, some of, I moved to US 25 years ago. I still, uh, you know, like as I just said, I still say ah uh, and um and sometimes uh, I tend to use okay, okay a lot. And these are my filler words. It's okay to have these filler words. It's, it's absolutely fine, but you should be able to effectively communicate exactly whatever you want to communicate. Yeah, this is very important at a work environment and uh, soft skills is also very uh, important and these are the things that you can train on it's not like okay oh i don't have soft skills what do i mean by soft skills for example if you work at a multicultural environment which is the case in most of the western uh, countries uh, even in countries like india for example you do work in a multicultural environment because people come from different language backgrounds different north and south have different uh, culturally they are different so you have to be empathetic to why someone is thinking uh, uh, in a specific way and you have to practice thinking from their point of view so being empathetic uh, is very important again this is one of the soft skills but there are many many other soft skills that you can go google search look online on youtube and then gain these soft skills so uh, here are my top five plus two like seven uh, things that i personally think are almost essential for you to be able to uh, find your first job or position yourself in the top uh, um, you know a few percent or to be considered as part of your uh, interview and once you get the interview the next thing is you you know you have your charm and you can do your charm i mean of course if you are proficient at machine learning uh, hopefully you should be able to answer questions about numpies and pandas and expect technical questions uh, involving numpy and pandas and many many other things so hopefully you find these tips to be useful and if you think there are other essential things maybe uh, things that you learned from your own personal interview experience please go ahead and leave that as part of the comments so others can benefit from your experience thank you guys and good luck